Dewan Keir is a former Christian fundamentalist. She has a Master's of Religious Education degree from the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, but because of her spiritual gifts, was led to leave organized religion and become a professional psychic, hypnotist, spiritual teacher, and writer for over two decades. Then in the autumn of 2019, she began receiving messages that she was going to be separated and set apart for new work. The new work revealed itself to her becoming the channel for the consortium and for writing her new book, Return of the Divine Feminine, Rise of the Divine Masculine, and the men who are calling for her return. We discuss a wide range of topics, her new book, The Consortium, and so much more. I learned a lot and actually got a message myself from The Consortium. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, man. Thanks for sending me your books. Look, at, I got them here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I love The Return of the Divine Feminine and Rise of the Divine Masculine. I mean, I love them both, but I mean, that book was amazing. Thank you for writing it. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for sending it to me. And thank you for, you know, encouraging me in all the, all the videos and, you know, sending words of encouragement and appreciate it. It's been awesome. Um, for th joining me in my journey. How the hell did you find me, by the way? Right. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. Um, I have been following Christopher Bledsoe Sr. ever since I found out about his experience with a lady. Yeah. So it's like when I heard about that, I have just been like, I don't know, hypnotized, mesmerized, obsessed. I don't know. So yeah. I follow him, you know, whatever he says or does, I'm going to, you know, find it. Yeah, yeah. That led, led to me um, also uh, following his son, Ryan, because right. Ryan, doing interviews and now he has a podcast and they're even going video now what have you yeah and I, because i was following ron i saw him um with you in the dream team i guess is oh what yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was like, um I, I had gone there because of ron right uh -huh. yeah I yeah fell in love with the three of y'all it was Aww. Oh my goodness. So um, I subscribed to your channel, of course. Thank you. Thank you. And also Jay's Project Unity. Right. Uh, I started following y'all on Twitter and Jean Luc as well. Yeah. And just, it was like, y'all lift my spirits oh. every time I see you or hear you. Oh, uh, thank you so much. You're just raising vibrational frequency and it gives me hope. You know, <laughs> That's I, I great. Mean, I'm an old crone now. I'm an old hag. And, <laughs> no, don't say that about yourself. Well, Come I, on now. I own that. I own that as being very powerful. You <laughs> okay, know? Good. And, and so um, sometimes as an old crone, as an old hag, I wonder, it's like, God, I've been doing this work forever. <laughs> <laughs> right. And what happens to it after I'm gone? You right, know, right. are there people that, are actually picking up on it and continuing it. And that's what I get from, from Ron, you know, continuing his family story and from you and Jay and Jean-Luc. It's oh, like, thank you. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's when awesome. I the other side, I'll probably visit y'all and go, keep it up. <laughs> do it. Do it. You don't have to wait to the other side. We're here now, which is rad. <laughs> I just, I, just I, I appreciate all of y'all. And oh, the, thank you. And the energy you're putting out in the world with the work that you're doing. You know, there, there's lots of people out there that are trying to do the work. Mm. Um, and there's something about the way y'all do it with lightheartedness, you know, yeah. and childlikeness. It, it's, I just feel like that that's so much more powerful than taking ourselves too seriously and uh, oh, you can't. I know. I mean, that's, that was big, the biggest thing. I mean, we've, I mean, there's some heavy times we've had in a lot of our, you know, videos too, where it's just like, man, this is just really heavy, you know, but I think it's cathartic to get it out just to be like, look, this is what we're feeling. And I think a lot of like what I read in your book too, which gave me hope was that, I mean, I, I got, I have like, you know, I, I think I wore a highlighter out because there's so many different things in this book that I was like, this is awesome. And I was like, this highlighter is dead. I need another one. And so then I started folding pages because I couldn't, my highlighter died at some point. So I was like, well, I got to make sure I don't forget that one, you know? So not just my day, but my week, my month, my oh, year. Thank stop. you. That's Seriously. There were so many things that resonated with me in here. And I think that, um, you know, 
I want to touch on some of them for sure, because I think a lot of it has to do with like what we're talking about. Like, you know, I never thought of it as the work or, or whatever, right. Or, or what, what I was doing or what I wasn't doing. I was just always, and I thank my parents, God, you know, for allowing me the freedom to kind of like be my own person and like have my own thoughts. I mean, I was still really uh, raised, you know, Catholic. I grew up in, you know, my, my mother and father's side, you know, my dad's you know, um, second generation from Poland. And that was just, you know, Roman Catholic all the way. And then my mother's side, the same thing, you know, I mean, from, um, you know, different parts of the world, but it was always, you know, Roman Catholic. So I grew up in that and I was always like, okay, this is cool, but I feel like, um, dude, this is just getting phoned in. (laughs) I feel like everybody in here is just phoning this in. There's a real message here, but I think, I think it's lost on everybody that's around here. And, you know, one of the things in your book, and I've always said too, is about symbolism. And, And I think, um, you know, I'm paraphrasing and I can pull the quote out, but it basically you were saying, you know, the symbols will always be there. It's just our, our ability to interpret them, right? The symbols will always be throughout time, but uh, our inner ability to interpret them, right? Keep sp- they keep speaking. It's like I, I might get something from it where I am right now, but I can come back around to that same symbol and then all of a sudden there's something brand new because I'm at a different place. Totally. You know, there's so much... You know, it's um, I joke with people about um, uh, especially uh, my my uh, I don't know if I say former uh, Christian fundamentalist friends or not. Um, <laughs> but we're, really, we're really not in touch anymore. Right. Right. Um, when we were and um, y- y- I could tell that they were just they were scared for me. You know, it's like yeah. I wanted to witness to me and keep me from going to hell. And I thought, oh, I've been there. I understand where you're coming from, you know. Um, but it was like, um, hopefully, I, 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 I guess the way I look at it is that my my concept of God when I was five years old mm-hmm. has changed, right? Right, right, I right. Would hope. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I use that same example just because, you know, I, I just turned 67. Hopefully my concept of God won't be the same when I'm 75. Right. I hope I keep growing and developing in my concept or understanding of God or the divine and what have you. Because if I stop, that means I feel like I've got all the answers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I stop asking questions. Right. You know, there's no growth in that. No, totally. And I think that, that you do a really, really great job in the book of kind of laying out um, how that, uh, you know, affects you or, or how you were affected by it and, and where you kind of came from. But I mean, I would, I, and, you know, just reading and, and I've listened to your YouTube channel. I mean, it's awesome. I've gone through that and the channelings that you were doing there. And, you know, I'm, I'm a newbie to the whole um, channeling and, in, in, you know, and all that. I mean, I, I've always been aware of it. I've never, <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I said, so am I. Oh, so are you. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just it's just something that happens, right? I mean, I've said it a couple a couple times before, and it was after you know I don't I think it was before or after it was somewhere around the time you know when Ryan and I first hooked up, and um, there was a do- there's a weird document that was getting floating around. We talked about it a lot in that chat, and um, it was just really weird. It was just repeating patterns, and it was a bunch of different stuff, and. I think it turned something on in a lot of us and, and Ryan and I for sure. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think Ryan didn't like a complete, like, boom, you know, after he got into that, it was just kind of maybe a, you know, neuro linguistic programming or something like that or, or whatever, but it, t- it, it got him in touch really deep into his spiritual side. But, you know, it wasn't until after that, that I've actually had something that you describe in your book of like, you, and, you know, for, correct me. Cause you know, but um, you're walking from, I think from your bedroom into the, you know, to somewhere else. And this voice comes to you and, and please tell me what this voice said in your own words. Cause I, I read it and I just want to hear it. Out of your mouth. Well, I hope I can remember it. Um, <laughs> You know, very often people will say, well, why did you write the book, Return yeah. of the Divine Feminine, Rise of the Divine Mas- Masculine? And I'll just look at it and go, well, it all started with my having to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pee. I, I had to pee. Yeah. Um, I got up one morning and was headed from the bedroom to the bathroom and right in the, you know, the door frame between the bedroom and the bathroom, I hear this voice that stops me in my tracks and says, Stop writing that book that you're writing. We want you to talk to men about the divine feminine and write about that. And you're like, okay. And I'm kind of <laughs> like, and I'm used to it because I've I've been a, um, a spiritual intuitive, a psychic, you know, for several decades. I'm and I'm very I'm much more clairaudient than I am 
um, clairvoyant, mm -hmm. even though I, I can pull those things in, but it's usually verbal. But this was like, I'm, it stops me in my tracks. It was wow. like, it was, it, I think if somebody else had been with me, I would wonder whether or not they'd heard it too. I doubt wow. they would have, but it felt like that. Mm -hmm. And as I say in the book, it's kind of like, you know, I really want to be at the highest spiritual service I can possibly be, but are you sure you got the right person? <laughs> uh, you know, what I'm thinking, as I say in the book, haven't we heard enough from men about those subjects? <laughs> fair. That's you very know? fair. And, yes. And then, you know, of course, I had to confront my own sexism as I went through this process, right? But it's like I'm going, seriously? You want me to talk to men about this? <laughs> and they're kind of like, I, I think they smirk and snicker and giggle a lot with me, kind of like, <laughs> okay, try, try it again with her. You know, <laughs> she hasn't quite gotten it. Yeah. Um, and they kept, you know, saying, we want, they just repeated themselves a couple of times. We want you to talk to men. You know, ask them questions, interview them about the divine feminine. We want you to write a book about it. And I'm kind of like, why? <laughs> it sounds like a really good idea, but why me? You know, with my background and having left religion because of it, you know, and all of that. And then finally, it was almost like, and they have to do this with me a lot. It was kind of like, okay, let us put it this way. The divine feminine is returning. She's going to stimulate the rise of the divine masculine. And their union is going to give birth to a new creation on the planet. And we'd really like for you to help us with that. <laughs> it was kind of like, oh. <laughs> uh, okay, well, when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. And also, I confess, I really needed to pee. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh. Uh, Okay. Deal. Okay. Right. <laughs> I gotta uh, go. I gotta go. Yeah, I, I really gotta go. <laughs> but it was, and it, I've trusted them, you know, with their guidance, with their guardianship, what have you. And so it was like, okay, y'all have never really asked me to do anything that hasn't worked out for the highest good. Right, you right, right, right. Um, even if I was kicking and screaming all the way along, you know? but it was like, okay. I'll do uh, this. Uh, and let, I, let me ask you to back up because like, how, how did you, dis I mean, how did you discover that you were, you know, um, psychic and, you know, uh, and, and, and have the ability to. Story. Um, I chose. You were religious fundamentalist. And let me just put that out there. I mean, you, you make no mistake about it. I mean, you were fundamentalist. That was that and that for people to understand that's kind of a very strict rule of law uh, it's it, and forgive me because just for my limited research no, I, grew, I grew up catholic but it's like <laughs> boom 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 right you know it's catholics i thought catholics I were yeah 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 catholics were strict but the fundamentalists were make the catholics look like uh, lutherans <laughs> we didn't even believe you catholics were saved okay so, like, <laughs> oh, you I witnessing, witnessing to you back then uh, um but i I, in my belief system right now, and that could change if I get additional information, knowledge, or, or wisdom, but in my belief system right now, I believe I chose to incarnate into this physical body. Cool. And I think I chose the family in which to incarnate. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom was an almost fanatical Christian fundamentalist. That's mm -hmm. how she was brought up. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, my dad was almost an atheist. Wow. Or at least he found the church distasteful. Well, <laughs> now, <laughs> you might ask, how and why did they get together? Right? Well, you that's, know? I was going to go there, but I figured that was a long story. That we didn't it, need to get it, was, it was quite a dysfunctional setup. It seems like it. Uh, but I think I chose to incarnate into that environment because I. I, I feel like I was called to come in here and try to free people from fundamentalism. Gotcha. And also to try to blend that idea that you don't have to be all one way or the other. Right. You know, they were two extremes, right? Mm -hmm. that, that there's a third way, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, that there's a way in between all of that. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, that's the environment that I that I came into, and um, I can't remember a time when I didn't see stuff, hear stuff, 
Um, and because between my mom and dad, because of the psychic ability, the only frame of reference I had, you know, was mom. <laughs> dad right. didn't have a frame of reference, you know. Right, right, so, right. So for you, it was all whatever that experiences you were having was God. It was, yeah. it was, it was that spiritual. It is all the right. reference I had, right. you know, or the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, what have you. you right, know? right, right. Um, and so, um, I think what happened, it was a process. It wasn't like, you know, because right. I believe it, hook, line, and sinker, John. I, I could tell you, you know, that I questioned it at a very early age. I did not. I, it was like hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. I went to a Southern Baptist church. I went to a Southern Baptist college. I went to seminary. I worked for the Southern Baptist convention. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for Southern Baptist churches. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, and I think it's because it was the, it was the only frame of reference that I had, but what happened bit by bit is a couple of things. Uh, what I was seeing and hearing and experiencing could no longer fit in that box. Uh, in other okay. words, I kept keep it in that box, but it wouldn't stay there. Gotcha. gotcha. And even though in the Bible, there's all sorts of supernatural, paranormal. I mean, we've got a guy who rose from the dead and walked around and talked and ate. And you would think the things I was seeing in here wouldn't be any big deal, right? Right. Um, Moses talked to a bush that was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is like, but I soon came to find out that it was a big deal. <laughs> and um, and especially because I was a woman. It was really interesting. It was like it it, it wouldn't fit in the box to begin with, but right. it really wouldn't fit in the box because I was a woman. That's um, true. And it's um, – but I, I feel like that I chose to incarnate into that in, into to my family and into that environment so that I would have those experiences that when I finally realized that it was not that I could not be kept in a box and what I was seeing and hearing and experiencing couldn't be kept in a box, I had to break out of the box and I understand how incredibly challenging and difficult it is for other people to break out of that box. It's, it wasn't just my education. It wasn't just my beliefs and experience. It was my livelihood. I mean, it, it was like everything, right? Right, um, right. Just, it just wouldn't work anymore. I had to break out of the box. And the way I look at it is if I can do it, <laughs> Anybody can do it. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, really, anybody can do it. Um, that's great. And I'm not saying it with fear and trembling, you know, because right, right. you've always had that idea of hell, you know, um, being afraid that you're going to go to hell, uh, being afraid that that you're not going to save somebody else from hell. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty heavy burden to carry around with you. You Catholics didn't have to carry that around as hard as we did. No, no, not at all. Not at yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, it, you uh, know. But one of the things Catholics you do is they may have tried to absorb her and neutralize her, but they kept the divine feminine because they realized they couldn't get rid of her and continue the growth across the world that they that, that they wanted. That was another great point in the book. You said that was right. They did keep, you know, the virgin there, but they, you know, it was more submissive, subdued. It was in the background. But like you said in the book, it was more of like they realized that they couldn't you know, completely get rid of her and they needed her, but they put her in the subservient role behind the scenes, right? right. Where, where she's not a central figure or, you know, it's just, um, yeah, she's here. Yeah, powerful. Or, you know, she's yeah. very submissive and yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, she's there and, you know, and, but the Catholics do pray the, you know, the Virgin Mary a lot. I mean, it's, you know, it's the big, the rosary and all that stuff, but you know, I, I, as I go, I went on this journey and, and a lot of the things, like I said, uh, that I read in the book was, was great. And it kind of hit, hit home. One of the things that stood out for me was, I think it was um, somebody that I think said, or maybe you, um, was that, you know, 30 years ago when you see your friends as a male, uh, you know, you couldn't walk up to them and hug them. And I've, you know, I'm 42, but in my whole life, I'd hug all my friends. <laughs> and I mean, it was just the way it was. And maybe, and I think back, maybe, you know, when I was 10 or something, maybe it wasn't that big of a thing, but I always thought it, you know, it wasn't a, 
a feminine thing or, you know, whatever. It was just showing, expressing my love for my friends and, you know, family and things like that. And it's interesting yeah, to see that in perspective. <laughs> what's that? What's that? It gives you the hope again? again that hope, you hmm. know, um, yeah. that, it, that it is changing, you know, that, that, um, that there is that return of the divine feminine for everyone. Uh, and it is stimulating the rise of the divine masculine. I mean, I see it in you. I see it in Jay. I see it in Jean Luc. I see it in Ryan. I see it in Christopher. I just it 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 makes my heart sing. I can't help it. Um, oh, that's because great. It helps me to recognize. And I, I shared in the book that when I first started the journey um, with with the book, um, I was under the false impression that the patriarchal systems in place across the planet were only damaging to women. Right. That's very sad. I didn't realize that. I, I mean, I, what, one of the things I learned from the men was that the patriarchal systems in place across the planet are just as damaging to men as they are to women, of course. especially men that are trying to um, come into wholeness right. and not, not one sided. Um, that I have to confess that was an eye opening experience for me. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, in, in, in a lot of ways, it's a lot of, um, I can't remember the exact term that you use in the book, but it's a lot of, um, you know, men self-policing men in that role where it's just like, well, you know, quit being a pussy, you know, or, or you know, stop, you know, what are you crying right. about? And, you know, yeah. things like that. And it's just that whole male shaming of each other to kind of, and it's like a self-policing system in, in a sense, you know, where it's just this cycle that happens. But like you said, hopefully there's hope where you don't, you know, um, you don't have to be that way. You, you know, as we get older, um, my generation anyway, I mean, you know, it's um, it's interesting to see how expressive we are with our emotions. And, you know, and, um, you know, I tell my, my friends all the time, I love them. I tell them. It's just because uh, I do, and it's it's not something that's, you know, uh, whatever. You know, like you said, the previous generation, guys wouldn't tell each other they love them, you know, or, or anything like that. Um, I just lost a really good friend. Um, actually, tomorrow is his wake. Uh, his wife found him dead in, in the garage when she got home from work, 42. I mean, growing up with him, I've known him for 30 years. And, you know, it's like hard, right? It's really hard, but, you, you know, I feel – in some sense, I, you know, I even talked to him, you know, six months a year, you know, COVID, all these things have been going on, you know, we have families and, you know, but I, he, that guy knew why I loved him and, you know, I think he loved mm -hmm. me too. And, you know, I, I always, cause you never know the next time you walk out your door, if you're never going to see that person again. And, and I always try to say that, you know, it's, it's just tell people how you feel. Don't feel like society or your friends or somebody else are trying to, um, uh, you know, tell you how to act or how to feel or what's appropriate. I mean, do what you th what's in your heart. I mean, and I think that's what more people need to get more in tune with, you know, that, that inner spirit, the inner uh, connection to your soul that people are just kind of, you know, probably uh, subdued in their own right, you know, self self subduing in, in a lot of ways, you know, but uh, I mean, I think that if we continue on the path to be able to, you know, r like rise the divine masculine with the divine feminine, the two things and you know and, and i'm sure from all my podcasts you're talking about, like you know guys need to step back i mean i've seen it i've always talked about the divine feminine and you know when i finally learned about it when i got in through you know all, all of my studies and my teachings and things like that and and i saw where she was there she was always there the prominent figure and she was always there in the background and i always felt like she's coming she's coming she's coming she's coming and i've had i want to say visions but i have like this reoccurring type of vision of her coming to me from the northeast you know type of thing and it's kind of like she's coming you know and it's kind of like, yeah, we've screwed it up. And like you said, in the patriarchal system as well, I, I, I don't know. In my mind, I always go back to the fact it was like, you know, women are so powerful. It, it, like, I don't know what men at the time were sitting down and like, all right, we gotta, we gotta stop this because <laughs> they're running everything. And they're like, we gotta, we gotta do something about this. We gotta, let's do, you know, like they've rolled for long enough. It's our turn, you know? And I don't know if it's part of the um, procession of the, you know, the, um, the galaxy and the, um, Zodiac, you know, we're finally getting back to the 26,000 year. We're coming back around to um, Aquarius. And, I hadn't even thought about that. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of where, you know, Scott Walter and I were talking about that. And I've talked to a, a, a frat or brother of mine, um, Jimmy Paul Lamb, same kind of deal that we're at the end of that cycle, that 26,500 26, year cycle or whatever it is that's coming back around. And we're, you know, we're, we're finally like kind of reset and we're starting back over and it's kind of gotten to the end of that wheel where we're, you know, the tables are kind of turning, but um, I don't think like uh, in your book, you know, you, you really kind of spit it out. It's like, you know, it's, this is not men becoming more like women and women becoming more like men. And I think that was really great that you pointed that out. And, you know, um, and how do you see that then? I mean, how would you explain that to people where they're like, what do you mean the rise of the divine feminine, you know, right, the rise masculine in your words? I mean, I know the book is amazing, but like when somebody sees that, I think you're right. They kind of immediately go, well, men's are, men are just going to be more like women and women are going to be like more men. But how do you see that? And how does, how does that play out? I love that question. Um, I think, first of all, it has to do with wholeness. It's like if if we're shutting off a major part of ourselves, then we're not whole. Right. Okay. Um, and, um, and I also feel like that it has to do with this new creation being birthed on the planet. Right. Um, it's... In other words, I, I find it very frustrating to be watching TV or a movie and they'll have a very powerful female lead. And what, what is she doing? She's whooping ass. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's like she's got the gun, she's got the moves and what have you. And I'm going, oh, great. A powerful, another powerful female lead who's whooping ass. Okay. <laughs> That's not exactly <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly what I was hoping for. And not that I have anything against anybody whooping ass that they feel like they need to whoop ass, right, you know, right, including right. women. But it's like, okay, that's not exactly what I was hoping for. You right. know, um, it's not just a woman becoming more like a macho man, you know, or, or a macho man becoming, you know, more in touch with his feelings. It has more to do with whole, a wholeness. It has to do with... Um, not cutting off a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I learned through the process is that what, um, what the consortium told me and what they were talking about when they said the divine feminine is returning and she will stimulate the rise of the divine masculine and their union will give birth to a new creation on the planet it, it's like bit by bit I found out that that, that was true. In other words, when I was interviewing these men and bless their hearts, I mean, they just poured their hearts out, didn't they? I yeah. mean, just really open and honest and direct. And I learned so much from them Right. Um, that um, what, what I learned in the process is that it was, it has been very challenging, very difficult for men to get in touch with the divine masculine because the model we've had is this, angry judgmental smite you here smite you there kind of god and if if that is your idea of the divine masculine most you know moral and ethical men are going no thank you you know <laughs> yeah. sacrifice your firstborn what <laughs> <laughs> so, i don't no, think I so <laughs> i think i'm more ethical than you are god why yeah. i would Ask somebody to do that, right? That's kind of a um, dick. <laughs> like, what's his problem? Like a jerk, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like you wouldn't want this this God as your best friend, right? I I, I joke with uh, people, you know, that a God fearing Christian makes about as much sense to me as a husband fearing wife. <laughs> you know, it's so a, that's, same not, thing. that's not a basis on which to develop a relationship, right? Not at all. Um, so you don't really have a great role model in the divine masculine, right. um, at least from not of the three major world religions of um, the Abrahamic uh, religions, the, right? Yeah, Christianity and Islam. It's like that's and that's those are the pervasive religions, especially in in, in our environment. Right. But what I found is that when these men started talking about the divine feminine, it was like they they just they became so animated mm -hmm. it was like she's this she's this she's that she's this blah 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 blah. and i realized that it was very hard for them to get in touch with their divine masculine but it wasn't at all hard for them to get in touch with the divine feminine and i'm going well this is really interesting and i watched as they got in touch with their divine feminine 
then all of a sudden they started getting in touch with their divine masculine because they were no longer preoccupied with the obsolete concepts of God. It was like, oh, and I went, oh, that's what that's what they told me is that the return of the divine feminine would stimulate the rise of the divine masculine. In other words, it would free everyone from that that concept, that obsolete concept of God. Right. And then it was like, okay, if that's true, well, then the rest of it must be true. Their union is going to give birth to a new creation on the planet. And I'm thinking, okay, this sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What is the what is the birth? Of, what is it, what is it birthing? I don't. I've I've just been speculating about that. I don't. I don't even know. Like I don't know if it's a more spiritual being or I. I got any clues? <laughs> well, what what I found out through the process, I think, uh, is that it's the new creation on the planet are human beings who can get in touch with their own divinity, mm. their higher selves, and incorporate it into their, their physical incarnation. That And that divinity, our divinity, isn't male or female. Right. It isn't just divine feminine, divine masculine. It is the union of that. And so... So what I think I've learned from it is that the birth of the new creation is the fully divine human. Nice. We we're, draw we're, down our divinity, and and that's what brings down as above, so below, um, bringing heaven to earth, all of that. It's like I um, – I probably identify with the new age movement more than I do anything else right now. Right. Uh, but I always feel challenged by this whole idea of ascension. Yeah. Because what I've been told from those that have been working with me since I was born and now specifically referring to themselves as the consortium is that we're not trying to get out of here. We're trying to get more of us in here. Makes it sense. is, you understand the difference? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's like, uh, maybe it's left over from religion and the idea of going to heaven. But what, what I understand it to be, ascension is not getting out of here, is getting more of us, more of our soul, our spirit, our higher selves in here mm -hmm. so that we can ground it into this physical material reality um and what i've learned from the consortium that's that's happened after i wrote the book but what i've learned from the consortium is uh and i've checked this out going okay is that really true and i've I found you know that it, confirming that oh it really is true um you know when we're we're taught about earth and the sun and our solar system and, and galaxy and what have you, it looks like it's just this model of something that's sitting still doing this, like the sun and everything's going around. It. Right. It's actually doing that, What's but it's right? flying through yeah. the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Flying through the galaxy, right? Yeah. So what the consortium has told me is that one of the reasons the divine feminine is returning to stimulate the really true divine masculine for us to bring all of ourselves in here to give birth to this new, this fully divine human is that the earth and our solar system is moving to a new place in our galaxy where that's actually, and you're talking about the procession of the equinoxes. Right. Um, where it's actually um, more accessible. It doesn't mean that it couldn't have been done earlier, mm -hmm. but that there's something about where where the earth herself is going, you know, mm -hmm. along with her. So, okay, we're on the earth. We're going with her because she's going with the solar system. We're going to a new place in the galaxy. Right. And that this new place in the galaxy, is, there's something about this new place that not only – can we see more and hear more? We're actually being seen and heard more. Ah, 
Nice. That's a good way. Yeah. You think about it from that perspective, right? Uh, Which then, you know, uh, we can start talking about UFOs and other dimensions and timelines and all of that. But um, I got a message from the consortium. I can't remember which video it is, but something like, um, you, there, there's some in the dimensions or timelines that are just now being able to see us and they're so excited and they're trying to contact us and have communication with us and what have you. And the consortium said, tell them, whoa, I'm, <laughs> I'm just now moving out of 3D, you know, third dimensional reality and I ain't quite got my legs under me yet. So just give me a moment. <laughs> right, right. I always thought that too, that like the veil is dropping in some regards, yeah. right? Like the veil is dropping and, and we're seeing more of it. And, you know, I never thought, I guess I'd never really exp- um, put myself in the perspective of them seeing more of us and being excited about it, right? I always, you always, we always put them in a position of, oh, they are way more powerful than us and they can see us and they've always been here and they're, you know, they can wipe us out if they want. But I never really put it in the perspective of, well, maybe they can see us now and they're just as excited as we are about them. I, and that's what the course, and I'm not saying that explains everyone and everything, but right, right, right. Did say that, there, you know, there are some that are so excited because, because now we're accessible to them, not just the other way around that it's like, but I thought it was so funny. It was kind of like, whoa, I pump, pump the brakes. I got, we just, we, I we, got my feet under me. Yeah. You <laughs> this minute. And I went, God, I love it that they have a sense of humor. You that's know? awesome. Is, yeah, so when you hear. When you hear them and it's the concern, so what is it like a, co- a chorus of voices? I mean, I know it's probably very difficult for you to explain this to me, but in wow. in my head, is it like, you know, is it a woman? Is it a man? Is it like 40 kids? Is it like, like, how are they communicating to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, Thanks to Anne. <laughs> I cleared that up. <laughs> Let me write that down. Yes. <laughs> is, is that... Uh, once I, I had to break out of the box of Christian fundamentalism right. that I've learned that I can't put anything else in a box <laughs> and, and as much as I would like to, Oh God, how I would like to put things in a box sometimes because it just makes it simpler. This box, that box, you know, right, right. um, but what I have found is, um, especially with the consortium, um, that, uh, the way they have described themselves to me is that they are a loosely, they really, really emphasize that they are a loosely <laughs> organized group of volunteers uh, from other star systems, dimensions, uh, those that have lived here and died. In other words, they're just like wide open. Right, right. Um, they're loosely associated. It's not like, you know, the the space command or the light. It's like they're loosely associated as volunteers. A bunch of people and, that met at the bar and said, hey, we should do something cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go here and talk to this chick that's already crazy. You know? <laughs> Look, she's a fundamentalist. Let's go get her. <laughs> <laughs> with her you know you're god Uh, uh, this is god (laughs) this is is them uh, at the bar you know like hey uh, it's um so it's um what in this loosely organized group of volunteers the way they describe themselves yeah um and all of these different places and what have you um there's certain ones that will come through at certain times and it may be a single voice, like the one that stopped me in the bathroom. Right, 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 <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Or, um, or it may feel more like a group. It's like, I, I feel like I get, get, it's like a circle of them seem to form around me and I'm, I'm in the, the middle of them and they're kind of vibrating at all the same frequency and communicating that way. Gotcha. Um, when, when I explain to someone that, that I've gone from Christian fundamentalism <laughs> mm-hmm. to being um, a, a psychic and a hypnotist um, and um, um, a teacher and a writer and all of that, and, and then that moved into being a psychic channeler, it's like you're already kind of looking at me like, whoa. You know, that's that's you know, from Christian fundamentalist to psychic channeler. And I think, well, if you believe in the Bible, most of it was channeled, right? Yeah. And so they got right, and some of it they didn't get so good, right? Um, but it's um, 
it's it's not usually when somebody talks about being a psychic channeler or being a channeler, you think about um you know, your body being taken, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but just that your body being taken over by someone else, another energy entity speaking through you, you know, in their voice. Yeah. Uh, that has happened to me before, but that's not the way this is working. It's more. Um, they're, communi when, they're communicating with you on, on your plane. It, it feels more like downloads. Gotcha. But I start getting hints that they're coming. It's mm -hmm. like. Um, a couple of days before it happens, I'll start feeling them. And I'm going, oh, okay. So the last time this happened and I started feeling this way, it wasn't the next day. So I've learned when I, it, 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 there's a shift in my energy, um, I'll go, okay, I need to cancel whatever I had for day after tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like, pst, 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 pst. And so I've just learned, okay, and that day I may just sit in meditation. I may go to the woods. Uh, Mother Nature is just a really connecting point for me. So I may go, okay. But I mean, it's been so cold here recently. It's like, you know, I'd freeze my buns off and not hear anything. <laughs> So it's like, okay, guess guess I'll meditate that yeah. day, right. and then it's like it's like these downloads. I I have to I I have an iPhone, and as soon as they start coming through, I I grab the iPhone and start recording, um, and then it'll stop, and then I'll wait, and then I might even get up and fix myself something to eat or go walking or what have you, and then I'll some psh, more. Um, so it's. So right now, it's not so much coming through as, um, hello, I'm such and such from such and such, and I have a message. It's more of a download process. Now, right, right. I mean, from listening to your you know, YouTube videos, it's kind of like, and forgive me, I mean, I don't mean this in, in disrespect at all, but it just seems like some of the things like I, I, you probably weren't into UFOs or any of this other stuff before you got in before the, the consortium. I mean, were you, I mean, it, because some of the yes. stuff that they're, Oh, you were okay. Because some of the stuff they were talking <laughs> about, I was like, okay. So that's, you know, um, it, you know, that's really like on, on the lines of the stuff that I've always been interested in. Like where, where does this, where does this connect, you know, with, with the UFO thing and, and spirituality and consciousness and, you know, where that goes. And it's kind of like, wow. Um, it, it really just touches upon all of that stuff. You know, I think that, um, the paradigm shift that I think a lot of people are, I think the government's probably doing a good job of just getting it out there that yeah, UFOs are, are real. We just don't know what they are. And I think that the next paradigm shift and all of that has to go from it's a little green men and a, and a silver disc to maybe this is a light being itself. Maybe this is an actual entity in its own right. Maybe this is a you know, thing that mm -hmm. uh, some of our religions called angels at one point or demons for, for it's just how I got into it because here, here I am uh, a Christian fundamentalist studying the scriptures. I mean, I would pour over them, you know, and it would be like giants. Okay. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Check. Uh, okay. There were okay. giants on the earth in those days. I'm like, really? I'm like, You're just going to say Ezekiel's that and then just wheel? stop? <laughs> you just stop talking uh, about the giants after that? What, what, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, Ezekiel's wheel coming out of the sky. Right. Um, when Moses is leading the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the it, Israelites out of uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. it's by a pillar of fire during the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night. Mm -hmm. Really? Is is it? Uh, okay. <laughs> and you just, you, <laughs> you know, um, uh, there's whirlwinds, there's clouds, there's, I mean, you know, and as I'm pouring out the scriptures, I'm going, something's going on here. And so I did, con I did carry that with me that there's something going on here that isn't just in 
um, the Hebrew Bible or what Christians call the Old Testament or the New Testament. Mm-hmm. It, it's not just there. It's also in um, the Muslim scriptures. It's also in um, the Jewish scriptures. It's right. also Hindu, Buddhist. It's, it's like uh, the ancient when you, you get back to, you know, Assyrian and Babylonian and Sumerian and what have you. And it's like, it's all there. okay, I, yeah, it's something's going on here. Mm-hmm. I may not know what it is. And I think that we rush too quickly. That's one of the things that the consortium talked about that I, I thought was really interesting. I think we rush too quickly to try to put it all in one box. Right. It's like, you know, oh, are they good or bad? And, you know, I go, well, is humanity good or bad? You know, well, what is their agenda? Well, what is humanity's agenda? You, you know, it's like I, it, we keep trying to put that in a box or put them in several boxes, you know, right. this race and this race and this race. And I'm not sure we can do that yet. I, one of the things the consortium are those coming, you know, back and forth from the consortium or are coming through the consortium uh, have said, um, let's see if I can if I can get this right, is that they're, they're, I, I kept asking them, who are you? You know, mm-hmm. people keep asking, who are you? You know, g- give me a little bit more to go on. Right. And they said, okay, we'll I'll tell you we're this loosely organized group of volunteers and we're different star systems and different dimensions and timelines and, you know, you're dead and what have you. But we, we come together when we feel like that there's a message to be delivered and you've agreed to deliver those messages. So we, we, we give them to you to deliver. We appreciate that. And that the main reason that we've come together is to help everyone prepare for the gathering. And I'm going, what is the gathering? Are there and drinks? Going, <laughs> <laughs> Are there drinks? Hey. And they say that the gathering is those in physical and non-physical form who have heard the call of the earth mm-hmm. as she is in her ascension process, meaning her with the solar system going to this place in the galaxy. Right. That that have heard the call of the earth as she's entering this place in the galaxy for the ascension of all that there is. In other words, this isn't just about us. This isn't just about the earth. It isn't just about our solar system. Quite frankly, it isn't just about our galaxy. It's like, as we raise our vibrational frequency and are able to bring more of our divinity in it, it changes everyone and everything throughout the cosmos. So we're like joining the team. We're like kind of elevating ourselves to join the the team kind of a thing, right? Yes. And it allows them or enables or empowers them to do the same thing. Oh, So they're leveling up. If we level up, it's kind of like the whole, everybody's getting getting higher. I got you. So they're going, it's like, or that's, that's what I understand from the consortium. And it makes perfect sense to me. It's like when something doesn't resonate, I ask for clarity until I feel like it resonates. And it was like, okay, that does make sense. We're continually hearing messages about the more of us who become conscious, um, the more conscious everyone and everything will become. And, you know, um, I joke, uh, somebody said, oh, it looks like it's in the world. It's the end times. And I go, yes, it's the apocalypse. And people will go, you believe it's the apocalypse? And I go, yes. Yeah. Do you know what apocalypse means? <laughs> Nobody knows what apocalypse means. They think it, they think a fire is going to come out of this guy and kill him. Right. Apocalypse just means, quite simply, unveiling what has been veiled. Mm-hmm. Right. Revealing. <laughs> revelation. Revealing. Yeah. You know, revelation. And and it's like for for those, I I I, I joke that it's like okay, so what has been veiled is going to be unveiled and revealed. The revelation. For those that have a lot to hide, not such a good time. <laughs> those yeah. who have less to hide, it could be part of time, right? That's right. Yeah. You know? it's like, and so um, there's something about the apocalypse, the revealing of what has, has that needs to be revealed, um, to me is a very positive and uplifting and hopeful message. So when they're talking about helping us prepare for the gathering, 
that's that's to which that's that's what they're referring to. It's like this gathering is that all of all those of us in physical and non-physical form, including those of you that are on the earth that have heard this call of hers, that she is taking you and 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 as part of the solar system going to this new place in the galaxy, that everything is going to be shifting literally and figuratively right. Right. into a new location, into a new experience. A different and vibration, so, right? Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like okay, that that resonates with me. That makes sense. Now, exactly what that looks like, I don't know. People go, okay, does that mean, you know, spaceships in the sky? And I go, no, I don't know. I don't know what it means. They they haven't told me that. And I don't know if they will tell me that. Um or maybe they tried to tell me and I just needed to pee and didn't listen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I joke around. But oh, I mean, oh, it, my God. Where I was headed with all of that yeah. is um, that they have been very careful not to identify themselves too specifically. I mean, they've actually said we're doing that on purpose because you human beings have a tendency to label categorize and once you label us and categorize us you shut off all this other experience right. you know it's like, I, they didn't say this but I, it's kind of like i got this example of you know if we said that we were with serious everybody down there who's ever had anything to do with serious okay well they look like this they sound like this this is their agenda blah 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 they came here this time now they're coming again and it's like no, <laughs> Do we <know> that? <laughs> that was just Bill, the drunk guy who came down here that one time. It, it's not all of us. <laughs> so they've been very careful. It's like, yeah, well, you that's know, good. don't have such a tendency to label and categorize. And, and then they point out, once you label and categorize someone or something um, that you limit it and it's really it's really hard to continue a relationship again in a box, not Mm -hmm. allowing, not allowing it to expand and to grow into what it could be. Um, Well, I think that's kind of, yeah. And I think that's great. And I think I've definitely seen this as part of at least, you know, in my, you know, time this time on earth is that I've seen it go from, and you know this is very hot button topic but it's like you know the whole gender thing where this is a man this is a woman this is you know i've seen that go from you know complete uproar to okay well maybe there's you know this whole other idea that that like you said we put these in these boxes you're a man you're a woman you know okay you're born with these parts but i mean you know maybe um physically you are but mentally you're in a different category and why do we have to label you know, that, that whole division thing there. Um, I took a woman's gender studies course in college and, um, you know, I thought it was going to be <laughs> cool. You know, <laughs> I get the, no idea what it was about. Right. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to take this, you know, I'll take, I had to credit, I had to take, and I did actually learn a lot in that course. You know, I, I learned a lot about um, people that were, you know, gender assigned. I, I learned, a, uh, it was a great number and I can't remember. I don't even want to try to pretend I know the number, but it was a large number of, um, uh, people born all over the world that were born with both sex organs, right? So both male and female. And this is all over the planet. When the first day or even the second day, the doctors come and to, to most of these parents and say, okay, do you, you're going to pick. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And, um, and you know, what if they're wrong? <laughs> you, know, you, get that, you get that wrong 50% of the time, right? And a lot of it because of, you know, stigmas and things like that, 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 you know, maybe they picked wrong. Right. And this girl grows up and she is masculine, she, you know, all these things and she just can't figure out. And it, it was really disheartening to learn that like 80% of those people end up committing suicide because they're so confused and trapped in, in their, you know, the physical body doesn't match their, their, their mental, their psyche, you know? And, um, uh, it was really sad to kind of figure to learn that, you know, society puts that type of label, like, okay, you got to pick, you know, at this point to, to the point where it's like, well, you know, how can you, you know, and it's just a, a genetic thing or, or, you know, a sex thing. And it's just, it's just amazing to see that, um, you know, that's um, a, cat Abigail. Hey, Hi. 
she's just coming through. <laughs> she just knows what I'm talking about. That's all. But <laughs> so, so, you know, when I went through that, it was just like, wow, that's just really, you know, really harsh, you know? And it's like, it's really harder for the kids because I mean, a lot of, like I, like I learned a lot of the family wouldn't even admit to anything being different or wrong. You know, even when the kids started, you know, acting out or experiencing or, or, or you know, displaying traits mm -hmm. of the, of the opposite sex than what the parents picked for them. Right. They still continued the lie, which led to the, yeah. led to the, you know, drug abuse, alcohol, like, you know, depression and, and eventual suicide. And I'm like, that's just like the ultimate form of us trying to play God in, in a sense where we think we have to put these things in these boxes when in reality, who the hell cares? So quickly. So quickly. Oh, we do it so quickly. So quickly, oh, right? it so quickly. Yeah. And we do it. Um, I mean, just walking down the street, this guy's this, this woman's that, this, you know, without even doing that. And I think we're getting to the place and I, I hope we're getting to the place where we have more tolerance. You know I mean? Like think about when um, Obama was president in, uh, you know, that wasn't that long ago when it was, you know, the big thing about gay marriage. And it was like, oh, it's a big thing. It's a big thing, big thing, you know, same sex marriage, same sex marriage. And then finally it was like, okay, you can do what you want. And everybody's like, okay. <laughs> whatever right but it was like this big thing it was a big thing and now everybody's like ah, who cares yeah. what was the big brouhaha everybody what deserves is? to be miserable right <laughs> That's, that was a big joke it's yeah like, it was it was like oh, God. Oh. Mm -hmm. um when i was writing the return of the divine feminine rise of the divine masculine um and then then i get it confirmed by the consortium which is like i'm going okay was the consortium helping me with the book and i'm thinking yeah probably the voice i was hearing was part of it. i just didn't know to call those that come and go from the consortium the consortium you gotcha. know mm -hmm. um but um i really feel like that and this is just a personal opinion but based on my experience that duality is a sham Mm -hmm. it, it like we so believe, you know, in duality. And one of the things that I mentioned in the book is that we pretend like that it's either hot or cold. Mm -hmm. And it's like probably the reality is, is that there's hot, not quite as hot, lukewarm, neutral, cool, cold, icy. In other words, it's a continuum. There might be extremes on the continuum right. that seem to be in direct duality with each other, but the experience is not duality. And that there's something, I, I, it may have something to do with that old idea of, you know, uh, flesh is evil and spirit is good and, you know, that kind of duality. But it's, um, I think, are continuing to subscribe to the du duality, um, whether we're talking figuratively or literally, is is that kind of box thing, uh, whether it's gender or or any other issue, it's it's like, no, it's not an either or, it's a both and it's a continuum, not a du not a duality. Um and I know that goes a, a, you know, against a lot of beliefs, whether it's religion or even spiritual paths, you know, right. that things we live in duality. And it's like we believe in duality, <laughs> but I'm not sure that we have to live in duality. We could live in unity. Right. We could live in divinity, but we still seem to be choosing on the average to live in duality. And, and I feel like if we could choose, choose more to you to live in unity and even divinity, that, that that would shift everything. It wouldn't have to be an either, or um, the, those that come and go from the consortium continually talk about um, the way we human beings see other people as other. Right. You know, it's like, especially if they're the other side of the political aisle or the other side of the religious aisle or anything. It's like our pro-vax or anti-vax or, right. and even those boxes are not realistic because people don't necessarily fit in either of those boxes either. But this whole idea of um, uh, that, that subscribing to duality keeps us from getting to 
where we could be actually subscribing to unity and to divinity and, and living that kind of existence. And of course, consortium talks about, you know, as long as you humans see others as other, you're going to have a real challenge with us because <laughs> we're more other <laughs> than those that you think are other. And so, it, you know, do you think it's purposeful, though? I mean, that's the thing that bothers me. Do you think that 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 that, that whole um, duality thing is 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 a, is planned or or um, forced upon us at some point, or or is it just the way that we've been conditioned in the way that we've we've we view the the world that we as we understand it, we we have to do this categorization, this boxing, this quick to label things. I mean, is that something that you think is a learned thing, an inherited thing? Is that something that somebody's forcing upon us? Or do you think that we just kind of do that because it's easy and it's harder to kind of be more encompassing and more, uh, you know, more, uni you know, seeing everything as, as part of the whole? Well, question. That's an excellent question. I'm not, I'm not sure I have a ready answer for that. I, I, does. Um, <laughs> I feel I can tell you the way I feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, feel that it's a conditioning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means that we choose it or that it's you know forced upon us as much as it is a conditioning. It's like, um, well, I think it's good. I think because we have that inherent. Like I have my my daughter is going to be four, you know, and and you know she she's a pretty good at judgment of character for pretty much anything. You know, she can tell you that in, in, you know, it's probably based on all of her Disney movies, but she can tell you like good, bad, you know, like it's interesting to watch, you know, when we watch like these shows with her and she's like, um, I can't remember this one show we were watching, um, big hero six. Okay. And so like, I never watched it before and her and I are watching it together. And there's these two guys in the early on in the show and, you know, you think the one guy's the good guy. And I thought the one guy's the good guy. And my daughter's like, that's the bad guy. And I'm like, that's the, that's the good guy. Like he's out there. And like, you know, at the, towards the end of the movie, you find out like, no, that's the bad guy. And like, he was on screen for 30 seconds. And she's like, bad guy. I'm like, what? Like, no. Right. So it's like, you know, the kids have less of a filter, but I think they have more of a filter on, you know, I don't know, wavelengths or, or something like that. Right. To figure out, you know, they kind of are better judge. And I, and I don't know, if it, they're quicker to jump in the box, but I think they're quicker to jump in the box. That's more correct. You know, because we, on the other hand, could be like, Oh yeah. Like I, me, I'm like, that's the good, that's the professor. Good guy. What are you talking about? Right. And, and isn't it interesting that even the TV shows we watch and the movies we watch and what have you, there has to be, good guy, uh, that guy. We're conditioned, yeah, we could, we're conditioned to believe that there's a good guy and there's a bad guy right. as opposed to there's human beings who have good, and bad in them and some have more good and some have more bad and some choose the good more and some choose the bad more and what have you you right. know it's like somebody ever asked I, I don't think i've ever been asked this but if somebody ever asked me do you think you're a good person i probably would go i hope so <laughs> i most I of the time <laughs> i hope i choose that most of the time but i'm very constantly aware that that there are times that i have not chosen to be a good person that I've chosen to be really mean or ugly or judgmental or, you know, and, um, and so it's, it's that trying to put people in those labels and categories, if you just put them in the good box to do, do, does that mean that they're all good? You put them in the bad box. Does that mean that they're all bad? And I'm not talking about the strings of, you know, right, people right, that right. sacrifice else or or somebody that's you know a, a, a rapist and a mass murderer um but but on the average people are are somewhere on that continuum right <laughs> and we even slide on that continuum totally you know that's, i think we need yeah. to i don't think you know there's always the, the white you know the white or the dark i think i'm, I'm, I'm pretty much gray <laughs> i'll stay in the gray <laughs> When my hair went gray. I kind of kept going down that road and I was like, I'm just going to keep going that way with everything else because you have to have a little bit of both. You got to have the duality to kind of understand the reality I think is, is the way I feel anyway. Um, 
to, to kind of circle back to the whole, um, uh, I kind of wanted to, to pick your brain on the whole, the gift thing or, 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 you know, being able to hear things and see things as a child and things like that. I mean, I think that, you know, just watching my daughter and things like you, you can see that magic in, in everyone, you know, and I think as we get older, we kind of lose it. And, you know, even into my teens, I did see things that nobody else saw. And it was in my mind, they were ghosts, right? They were things that and it scared the hell out of me just because of the conditioning, right? Oh, it's a ghost, right? It's a poltergeist. This is it's something, boom. And I had a lady at the time who, you know, very into all this stuff, tell me, you can just turn it off. And I'm like, really? You don't want to see it anymore? You don't have to see it anymore. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I don't want to see it anymore, right? Because it scared the hell out of me for a long time. You know, I'm like, and I did, you know, but it took me a long time to turn it back on. And, and still, I, I kind of, I get the feeling when it's coming back and I'm like, eh. I don't know. Like, you know, the lady, I call her the lady, the divine feminine, you know, the lady that and I kind of get that from blood. So, right. The divine, you know, feminine, the, the white lady, the lady in white. And, you know, I kind of, kind of get her vibe, right. That I kind of know what she's, and it's weird. And I've said this, I don't know if I've actually said this on the thing, but I'll say it anyway right now, <laughs> because I get, I get the impression that she's coming to me from the Northeast and she's coming with two men behind her and she's bringing me a sword and she's, giving it to me and telling me that I have to go do this thing again that I've always done and I have to leave and go do it to some place, Sandy place. I think it's Sandy and I have to go with her and it's kind of like shit. It's like, I don't want to go, but I know I have to go and I got to go and I keep going. Ah, not right now, <laughs> you know, but uh, a friend of mine, Nick Hitton, he was on our dream team thing and, you know, he said, you know, Hathor, you know, he, he's going through Hathor and, you know, and he's going through all the, the divinity and the divine ladies, you know, Hathor is associated with the um, um, sycamore tree. And I just stopped and I'm like, there's a sycamore tree in the northeast corner of my yard. It's giant, right? And I'm like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I really, truly believe we are all born connected. Right. And, and I feel like more often than not, it gets conditioned out, out of, us. of us. And I'm not even saying that I mean, sometimes it gets, you know, it gets beaten out of us because, you know, your parents are afraid. But it's more like you get conditioned out of it. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 it's, and I also feel like that it, it may have to do with, too, how many lives have we spent fine-tuning it to where we may come in with more of it in this lifetime than we have before because we've been fine-tuning it so long, or that we're born into a family that everybody is psychic and they just encourage the hell out of you to develop your gifts as right. opposed to being conditioned out of it or beat, you know, you're beaten out of what have you. Um, but I, 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 I would like to share a okay. message that feel like that I got for you when you first asked me to come on the show. Okay, good. I can share it right now or I can share it when we're no, off sure, camera. Sure, no. Okay. Um, I, I was supposed to ask you this question. Okay. When are you going to write the book about the divine feminine in masonry? <laughs> Because you're very connected to her. I mean, she's right behind you. I mean, I'm <laughs> right now with the apron around her, right? You know? Yeah. And I, I that was, I said, just ask him, when is he going to write the book about the Divine Feminine and Mason? Oh, Scott, um, Scott Walter told me to do that. <laughs> Scott Walter has a better, getting yeah. Confirmation. You're getting a confirmation here. Um, and I love it that she's coming from the Northeast and that's where your, your sycamore tree is. And again, these symbols that, um, I, when I used to teach, uh, psychic development classes, one of the things that I would joke with uh, the participants about, I'm going, okay, we're going to break for lunch. And while you're at lunch, I want you to count how many red trucks you see. And they're kind of looking at me like, what? I go, trust me, just I, I want you to come back with the number of how many red trucks you see. And yeah. then everybody comes back after lunch. And it's like, I saw red trucks everywhere. <laughs> I have never seen red trucks, blah, 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 blah. And then I asked the question, so 
Do you think maybe there's always been that many red trucks out there, but you hadn't noticed them and that once you've decided to focus on them, then you could see them? And they're kind of looking at me like, where, where are you getting with this? And what I'm, what I'm trying to communicate is the psychic, the intuitive is all around us. Mm-hmm. But as long as we're not looking for it or focusing on it, we don't really perceive it or receive it. But once we do start focusing on it, then it's like it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, and and there's no reason for us to be given more information, knowledge, and wisdom if we're not actually using or utilizing or applying or acting on the information, knowledge, and wisdom we've already been given. It's like um uh when the consortium asked me to to give them my undivided attention i i stopped doing psychic readings and hypnosis you know and all of that but when i when i was doing psychic readings for individuals um i would find that if an individual um had not like if it was like a second or third reading if the individual had not already acted on what they had been told they would get almost the exact same reading again. And they're going, well, you've already told me that. I wanted something else. And I go, well, once you act on that, there will be something else. But why should they give you something else? Of course, I put it nicer than this. Yeah. You're not even listening. Like, <laughs> you're like, not oh, listening. Oh. Yeah. It's like, why, why give you more when you're not even acting on what you've already been given? Right. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like to me that you're very um, gifted and that if you would go, I would like to see more and hear more and experience more. And I am going to pay attention to do something with it that you would be really shocked and surprised, I think. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm down that road. I, I, uh, I try. And, and but it's like a healthy skepticism because my wife's always like, "Don't bring the aliens here to abduct me when I'm sleeping because you're out there doing CE five to whatever the hell you're doing in the woods." All right, I won't. <laughs> How do you know they're not already? But well, maybe they did. I don't know. But you know, uh, I just mess with her. But you know, she's just freaked out about it. But no, she's she gets it. You know, I mean, like she after she, I, mean, I think like it was a year ago. It was July 2020 when the whole family saw the UFO. You know, it was just like, there it is, you know, two of them. You know, the kids saw them first. And it was like, well, there it is, you know. And I think it's kind of like the, you know, the, I always joke around, it's like the gateway drug, the UFO in, in the sky, like the orange orb. And, you know, that's that's the first thing. And you're like, well, that shouldn't be there. And I think that is, um, in a sense, this whole UFO thing um, is that if we can believe in something that we've been told, forever that isn't real and people are shamed and people are, you know, silenced and, you know, tinfoil hats and they're putting those another box, right? That this guy's crazy. That lady's nuts. Um, if we can eventually as a society get to the point where we're like, okay, that's something, but we don't know what it is. And I think that kind of is just like poking a hole in the door to go, okay, well then maybe all these ghost things are a real thing, or maybe like all this other stuff, these, synchronicities people have or the psychic abilities people have or the remote viewing that is real or, or you know a remote influencing or any of that stuff right then the door gets open a little bit wider and a little bit more wide you know and then then finally you open the door to all of these possibilities that are that have always been in front of us forever that we've just kind of like you said put in these tiny boxes and and decided that that's not how we're going to live our lives but i think that honestly that we're getting there i think it's i think it's baby stepping but i think along with what you're saying as far as the galaxy and the solar system is we're rocketing into a place where those possibilities are endless if we can tap into them and like you said some people are going cool i've already been here i'm 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 in line i'm totally in in the in the groove and you got somebody else that's just reading the paper going well, that's kind of weird, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's, kind of, that's interesting. Did you see that big ship? That's weird. And, you know, and then like, I think it's like this slow thing, but I think everybody's kind of, you know, not everybody's as quick on the uptake as, as some other people, but 
I think maybe, things that, excuse me, go ahead. No, 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 no. I think that's kind of our job is some of the things that and, you know, I'm not speaking for you, but I think, you know, from uh, what I've learned from your work and, you know, getting to talk to you, I think that it's kind of part of our responsibility or something to just kind of like, go, look, it's okay to be this. And it's okay to believe these things and it's okay to embrace this thing to, that you don't at understand. Least explore them, to at least explore them. Right. And the questions to, I mean, think about how many things we would not be experiencing if there hadn't been someone that didn't ask the question or look for answers I, and answers in the plural, not the answer. Right. Once you right. find the answer, then you stop looking, right? And it's like, no, <laughs> for all the answers, you keep looking. Right. Um, that is, um, it, it stops us in our tracks when we find the answer and we, we already know the answer. Um, even <laughs> whether, whether it's UFOs, whether it's this, whether it's that. Um, I, I talk a lot about, because, you know, I'm a former Christian fundamentalist, I talk a lot about Christian fundamentalism, but you can also find fun, fundamentalism in the New Age movement. You know, this is the correct way to read tarot cards. This is this is the spread this is a, or um this is the way you contact your gods or my angel is higher than your angel or you know all of this you know oh the it's way, the way you're supposed to do it this way and what have you and i'm going ah, you know i everybody has a right to find and follow their own path you know yeah. that's why i'm yeah. in here i for me, the basic is that um, the original source of all creation, however we want to refer to that, God, dog, I don't know, but the original source of all creation, um, I feel like that we are sparks from the original source of all creation. Mm -hmm. And that the reason that the original source of all creation sparked into all of these different sparks is for experience. Yeah. You know, and that when we cut ourselves off from exploring our experience, it's like we're, we're cutting off the original source of all creation. Really? We're, we're cutting off our own personal growth. Um, and the growth for everyone and everything else. And if I'm understanding the consortium, we're even holding back others <laughs> in the cosmos. You know, it's, it's like, like when will they get, get their crap this? together? <laughs> the weak, weak link in the chain. Yeah. You know, it's like I always um, I always had that feeling that we were we had the ability that would astound ourselves not only ourselves but like everybody else in the galaxy i always had i always had that notion and i don't know where i got that from that it was like if we had any idea how strong and how powerful we are that that we wouldn't we wouldn't even be living this existence that we're living now i think that we've been like i don't know if purposefully or at some point that the divinity of the divine masculine the divine feminine was uh, separated I don't know if it was on purpose or I don't know if it was a malicious plan or somebody decided to do that for some, you know, joke. Well, we're on much their more easily manipulated and controlled when we're not whole, are we not? Exactly. If you can divide us, you can conquer us, right? And I think that's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, we're yeah. Talking about being divided within ourselves. It, yes. Ex oh, you know? exactly. Well, it's yeah. Like, I mean, like, if it, like from the male perspective, like a lot of the things, in, like you said in your book and a lot of the other guys that you talked about, it's like, you know, maybe I want to go hug this guy, but I feel like uh, somebody's going to call me a, you know, a sissy or something, right? Or if I experiment, express my feelings and and things like that, right? So we're like we're doing it to our, we're beating ourselves up for that whole division, right? And and you know, I mean, I can only imagine what it's like to be, you know, on the feminine side to be subjugated throughout all history, and most of the history erased and burned, and you know, witches were burned at the stake. Well. Sh for God's sakes, these people had way more couth than, you know, anybody else on the planet. And you just burned them because they weren't like you and because they were stronger than you were more powerful. You were more connected to the source. Right. So I think we're getting to the point where it's kind of like, uh, I hope that a lot of the people and because it is a matriarchal, you know, patriarchal society that they're going, well, maybe we kind of screwed this up for a while now. And like you said, the, the, 
the rise of the divine feminine will, you know, um, bring the rise of the divine masculine. And I think that in that we got to, as the males kind of got to uh, realize that the unity is the only way for it to happen. And, and I kind of go to the other extreme where like, I, I, from the male's perspective or whatever this incarnation is, like, I'm tired of being this, let the women run everything. <laughs> <I just don't. laughs> care anymore like we've screwed, we screwed it up, up. we right. screwed it up for so long i'm just tired they're cleaning up our mess it's forever and it's just like let them do what they're supposed to do i don't know <laughs> hopefully as we balance both within ourselves wh whoever's leading will be it will be in a more balanced way you know yeah. there you go regardless of gender it's um and i, I one of the things that I that I realized through the writing of the book and and learning from the men as we're we're talking is that, um, you know, you kind of have those aha moments sometimes that you go, oh, I'm blinded by the obvious, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is that um, how it, without the um, the union of of the divine feminine principle or energy with the divine masculine principle or energy. Um, it's it, where we are now. It takes both where the human beings or plants or animals. It takes both to conceive. Okay. Right. Right. And, and to create and to give birth. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was this aha moment of, Hmm. No wonder why all those manifesting workshops that people take doesn't they don't work. You know, we're continually talking about, you know, you can create, you can manifest, you can, you know, people go to these things and they still aren't, can't figure out to create or manifest or what have you. And it's like I had this aha moment. The key is that it takes the the divine feminine, the divine masculine energies or principles for that process to happen, for conception and creation and birth. To to, to 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 happen, and so it's like that may be the key that's missing in all the create your own reality manifestation workshops. Is that we're going to have to get those two energies or principles? I'm not talking about genders. The energies and principles together, right? And ourselves that union for that conception and that creation and that manifestation to happen. And I'm going, hmm. Because it was just like this aha. It's like, it just makes so much sense. I mean, even in nature. Yeah. Yeah. And hermetic principles as well. I mean, I think it was. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, whether it, it's animals or plants or, and there's some uh, species that are monoecious. They talk about that they, they have um, both sets of whatever energies, principles, uh, paraphernalia to reproduce, but they still need the two sets coming together for the conception and birth to happen. And so is that not also a spiritual lesson for us that we've got to have those two come together to create and manifest um, in physical material reality as well. And it just makes so much sense to me. It's like, that's, that's why people are, in my opinion, having, are so having such a challenging, difficult time with, with your co-creator, your right. can manifest and, and what have you. And people are going, I'm trying, I'm, I'm try it, it ain't working. And it's like, well, you're going to have to bring those two into union. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's a lot easier than, than people realize. I mean, it's not like, you know, like you said, we got to like do the certain thing, you know, this is the only way to read tarot cards this is the only you know this is the only you have to throw the salt <laughs> this per you know and it has to be this kind of no i think everybody has it in them to be able to do this and that i think the the thing that's lacking is the belief in themselves the belief that they can the belief that um that they have the power and i think that that self-confidence or the um you know gestalt that everybody should have should be grabbed on to a little bit more you know like the the, the very the very uh, first instinct is usually is always the right one.
And I think that we second guess ourselves and all these other things. And I think we, we can get closer to that. I think, you know, in the UFO world and the UFO aspect of, the, of that, you know, when CE5 is starting to be a bigger thing where, you know, they go out there and, you know, you can do it. And I mean, I've done it with a bunch of guys. I mean, we went out there and, you know, meditated on, you know, consciously bringing something in and for, you know, and it happened, you know, and I think you can do that with the manifestation, right? But I think you do, like you said, you do have to have part of that whole mix of the of the duality within you um, to, to create that to happen. And I think we're getting there. I think we, we are getting there. I hope we're getting there. Um, I hope my daughter grows up in a world that it's it's a lot easier for that to happen. And I think that, we, but um, you have to go through some uh, heartache and some trying times before you can get to there. I think that the world's going through that right now. I think the planet itself, the earth is kind of, you know, with everything that's happening now on the planet and it has been, I think it's kind of getting to the point where it's like, well, you got to kind of sow these seeds in some kind of dirt of, you know, the earth that's kind of been through some pain before you can get to the other side. And I think that that's part of the whole duality too, right? You got to have the dark and the light. And I think we're, we're pretty dark right now. <laughs> and the light is, is just coming over the horizon. One of the things that I think may be going on is that, and maybe I'm being overly positive and optimistic, but it really resonates with my heart, body, and soul, is that it's because there is so much light on the planet right now that even those people, places, things, what have you, in the dark can no longer remain hidden. Yeah, it's totally words, happening. Like, yeah. But it's, it's not like, you know, when we see something or learn about something dark, it's not like it hasn't always been there. It's like people, oh, things are so bad. And it's like, no, you're just seeing the way they've always been because there's so much light shining on it now. Right. So if we can focus on the light and not the darkness and see it again, part of the revelation or the apocalypse, what has been hidden is being revealed, revelation, mm -hmm. that it's the reason that we are seeing all these things is that it's because there's so much light. That's awesome. The light is so bright that it's actually shining on them. And they cannot hide. In this, these things can't, can't continue to hide in the shadows because there is so much light. That's great. And so when I, when I see something or hear something or, you know, or find out about something, I go, oh, man. Wow, that's dark. That oh oh, let me hmm, let me raise my vibrational frequency. I try to shift it into yeah, that's really dark, and it's probably always been there, but we haven't been able to see it until now because we didn't have as much light as we do now. And I'm just what I'm trying to do is focus on more and more of that light shining in all the recesses until everything does come into the light. Yeah, no, I, I think that's what's definitely happening when you're looking at, you know, like the Epstein thing and all the, you know, all the crazy stuff that's going on all over the planet. I mean, it's like that, that needs to be gone. <laughs> like that, You're right. It's been there forever, but no, it needs to go away. Um, yeah. I mean, thinking about the whole, um, what you said earlier about the message about the, the book about the, um, you know, the, the female in the uh, divine feminine in masonry. And it's, it's interesting to put that in perspective for what I've learned and what I know. And I don't pretend to know everything about masonry at all. I mean, I'm still learning every single day, but um, it's interesting that there are, you know, female lodges and it's in England right now. I mean, it's, 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 um, you know, there's, um, Masonic lodges in America. I didn't the, know that. Yeah, there's all there's all um, women uh, all all women lodges in in England, um, and I can't remember the actual name of the the, the organization, but they're they're Masons, the Freemasons, but they're you know all female lodges in America. There is um, the Order of the Eastern Star, which is an all female lodge, and it's it's a, a branch, but it's kind of bullshit in my <laughs> because you have to be a woman has to be like married to a mason or related to a mason in some right. you know in some manner and i'm like it, really almost like let's throw them a bone <laughs> yeah and i'm just like really why can't it just be you know, but yeah it, no but in england they're straight up doing it you know and um so you know i do see that coming around i, I do see it because I, I do see a place for it um but then 
when I see the division again and I, and I see that um, separation, like it has been, I, I always, I, like I always go back to the asking questions like, why, why was, why was there the division, you know, and I've never been able to find that answer. I've there, I mean, through any of the text or any of the, any of the people I've spoken with or any, any of the, you know, like old timers, right? Right. What is the, what is the rationale behind that? Right. Um, and I don't know. And I don't know if I'll ever find the answer. Right. And, but I would like to think at some point there was a purpose behind it, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what the book is about is interviewing as many Masons as you can and doing some reading and research and into that history. Um, I meant to share with you that my dad uh, was the grand poobah of his lodge, whatever oh, you uh, call them. We call them the worshipful uh, master, believe it or not. Uh, and it, uh, of course, he never talked about being a Mason. But he, he had his Masonic tie pin, his Masonic ring, you know. Um, and, and your um, mama was a, a, a fundamentalist. <laughs> she even joined the Eastern Star so they could do stuff together. She did as a fundamental. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but there's a lot of, I mean, you'd see a lot of Bible. And, and this is in the South, right? I mean. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of, I mean, there, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could see a lot of correlation between the Bible. I'm sure she didn't run out of there screaming like, these are the devil, right? I mean, she didn't. Well, she was, t she called me one night. Um, they're both dead now, but. Um, I'm sorry. And she was part of Eastern Star. Um, she said, I'm going to have to do something in Eastern Star, and I'm scared to death. And I said, what? And she goes, I'm supposed to play esther from the bible in some kind of ceremonial ritual and she goes i i can read about esther in the bible but who am i to 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 play esther in anything and i said mom it's a role you know you're acting you know you're pretending and she went i know and she goes but she said, no, no, i just and they're going to make me speak and they're going to you know she was absolutely and it and the next thing I knew, she had bought her formal, mm. okay, for what the ceremony or ritual was going to be. Yeah. She had memorized her part as Esther. And even dad was like, your mom knows her part. Like, she, she's not even hesitating or stuttering. And I'm going, okay. Now, I don't know what that was all about, that she would be playing Esther in any kind of ceremony or ritual for the Eastern Star. But it was like, I could tell that it was the biblical connection that was really speaking to her. And it was also intimidating to her, like, I'm supposed to play. Let's portray this <laughs> role, role of, of Esther. Esther? Yeah. yeah really, really overwhelmed by it. Um, wow. How was she on the other side it, of that after she did it? How was that for her? It was life changing. It, it, there was something about her finding her voice, mm -hmm. which she never really had. Um, and I, one of the things that she said is that I felt beautiful. Oh, wow. There was something about wearing the dress, playing the role. And that's one of the things Esther was known for, right? Her mm -hmm. beauty. Mm -hmm. That's what saved that's what saved her people. Mm -hmm. it's, that's what got her, you know, the ear of the king and, and what have you was her beauty. And I pointed that out to my mom. I said, well, you do know that it makes perfect sense that you felt beautiful because that was one of Esther's gifts and the reason that she got the ear of the king. And mom's like, I mean, she didn't even realize, you know, what she was saying, but <laughs> she, it was, she experienced feeling beautiful and she, she never was, she was a beautiful woman, but she never, ever felt like she was a beautiful woman until she played Esther in the Eastern star. It was beautiful. Well, that's amazing. And that's what I loved about masonry when I like joined it, you know, I mean, one of the things that we say, you know, it's not only really a tagline, but it's like, you know, making good men great right or good making good men better you know that was one of the things you know and um it's one of those things where 
you know, they have some of the promotional videos or when you talk to people that you know, some of these, uh, you know, that's the hardest, public speaking is one of the hardest things to do anybody, right? And, and from anywhere, any walk of life. And one of the things that masonry does is like when you, when you get presented to the situations, it's, it's in a place where there's no judgment and everybody is, is there to help you be better, a better you, right? In, in the, whatever situation you're in. And it kind of, doing that public speaking, you know, so to speak, full of people in front of people that will never ridicule you will never, you know, um, they're to support you, support they're, you. They're, yes. They're, they're encouraging you. Yeah. Yeah. They're encouraging you and supporting you and they're being that foundation for you. And, 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 and bestowing that gift of that whole self, um, you know, um, realization that you are somebody that's great. You are a person that's, you know, um, not just sitting on the sidelines you are a person that's kind of been tasked to help humanity raise its vibration and up to a, a different level and you feel a responsibility at that point to to be a better person for not only you and your family and but for humanity and society and the, and the places that you live and work and everywhere you go you know you're supposed to help that and i think those are the things that masonry for me anyway was like wow this is great i mean i never had a problem talking to anybody but you know i've seen people that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why but but you know i've seen people it's that uh, fear. i think it's it's even um when you when you rank fears that it's like the top fear in some place like second or third is fear of death exactly fear yeah of <laughs> it's even higher than that. Exactly. It's like, uh, I'd rather die. Like, literally? Yes, I'd rather. Okay, well. Because <laughs> this is killing me. I can't do good. this. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. But I think masonry for, uh, you know, when it when they, when they put you, when you go through the ritual and the ritual and, you know, you do the degrees and the ritual, I think it actually does something and, and to kind of circle all back through symbology. I think it does something through symbology, through rhetoric, through all of these things where even like your mom she didn't know i mean she was she felt beautiful she was i mean that's great i think that when you take on that role or when you and when you portray that degree or, or you know um you know the play you know whatever you kind of are uh, you know in, in the psychic terms you're kind of like being channel you channel that role and, I agree. And you do yes. you kind of channel that persona that role and it in it, it, you know, and it instills in you that confidence, that beauty, whatever the the role is supposed to to do, right? And and I think you take that with you, like your mother did, out into the world, and then you are a better person for that. And then you touch somebody else's life in a way that you probably could have never done before, and well, then that just rolls the down. The way I saw it in my dad's life, not not when it was actually happening, I can look back on it mm -hmm. now. Um, for someone who found religion very distasteful, <laughs> yeah, uh, who have found his spiritual path through being a Mason and even being the the Grand Poobah, I just say the Grand Poobah. <laughs> uh, it's God. weird because we call him the Worshipful Master. You're like, am I supposed to worship you? Yeah, it's just the Worshipful, worshipful Master. Worshipful Master. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it 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 gave him his outlet for his spirituality. Of course. Um, both my mom and dad um, knew that they were dying. It was back in 2012. Mom got diagnosed with cancer, knew mm. she was dying, went through the process. And two weeks after we buried her, dad found out he was dying. <laughs> and, and it was really interesting how, how both of them were willing to talk about that they were dying and what they wanted and didn't want through that whole process and even for their funeral. And um, as much of a Christian fundamentalist uh, that my mom was, she, she didn't want preaching at her funeral. And I asked, I said, I asked, and I asked her why. And she said, I don't want the people who come to my funeral to feel uncomfortable. And I went, Okay. So there was no preaching at a funeral. Dad talked about his funeral and he says, I don't want a preacher at my funeral. And I said, okay. I said, do you want any kind of service? And he goes, I want Masonic rites. Mm -hmm. 
and he told me, you know, who to contact and what have you. And and I don't think I'd ever been to a funeral where there were the Masonic rites. Is, am I saying it right? The yeah. Masonic oh, rites? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is Masonic rites. Yeah. I mean, he told you where his apron yeah. was, right? And he wanted to be buried with his apron. And, right. Like, it was like, okay. And so watching this group of men show up for his funeral and then to perform the Masonic rites at the graveside, just because I, I'd never seen it before, um, didn't know an, a lot of, of what, what they were doing. Right. But the way the man spoke the words, most people would just learn how to recite something, right? Right, right. This man was not just reciting something. Mm-hmm. He was speaking something into being mm-hmm. is the only way I know how to describe it. It was like it was so powerful. And when he was through, you know, and supposedly everything's done and everybody's supposed to go, you know, love you, bye, and what have you, everybody just sat there. Mm-hmm. Nobody could move. And it was like it it was it was a holy sacred energy. <laughs> That nobody wanted to disturb. And finally, it was like, I'm going, okay, everybody's probably waiting. I'm an only child. Everybody's kind of probably waiting on me to move. But it was like. You're like, that- I got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Was- I had to bring it back around. <laughs> but it was this voice going, not yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't Don't say or move yet. And so I just sat with it until I felt like, okay, there was something very holy and sacred there that needed to permeate. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, now it's done. And so I just got up and thanked everybody for coming. And then, you know, everybody's starting to go their own way. But it was, and I didn't even know the men who were doing the right. You know what I'm saying? I never met any of them. So it wasn't like there was some kind of personal affiliation with who was doing it it was the right it was it was someone speaking something into being which is which is what we do when we're in touch with our divinity we know that that's that self-esteem thing that self-image thing self-assurance of what have you is right. that once we incorporate that we are sparks of the divine I mean anything Oh, it's it's so powerful. It and it's and it's and it's real and it's true and it's holy and sacred. Um, that we realize that our words are holy and sacred, our actions are holy and sacred, even our thoughts, thoughts yeah, yeah. Right there, thoughts, words, actions. Um, that 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 there's that drawing down divinity, which includes both the divine feminine and the divine masculine mm-hmm. draw down that divinity not only empowers us but it empowers everyone around us and even the planet itself it's amazing i remember i remember taking part in my first um masonic, fun- masonic funeral and um it was really amazing because you know i was young and you know a young mason at the time yeah i was probably 28 29 whatever but you know what one of our brothers from the lodge passed and it was like, you know, meet here, we're going to do this. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't have it, obviously didn't have a speaking role. I was just, you know, there to, you know, be there. But I remember, I, I, I remember like it was yesterday where when, you know, the master of the lodge, it was the worshipful master of the lodge, it kind of starts that. And there's, you know, the chaplain as well of the lodge, but um, started going into the, um, uh, the the funeral, the funeral rites, the funeral service. And I'm going, I took an oath not to say some of these things out loud that you're saying. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going, um, does anybody else hear what he's saying? You know what I mean? And then I was going, okay. And, but then like you said, I felt the weight of the, you know, the, um, the wife and and the kids and, you know, that were there that were, you know, experiencing this, I felt that get lighter. I felt them 
receive whatever the message was that we were conveying to them. And it was the message of hope. It was a message of the um, mortality of the soul. It was the message of the divinity of every human. And it was the message that the grieving that you that you're experiencing now is not lost on anything or anyone, but you should know that this isn't the end. Mm. And that to me, when I saw how that impacted them made me feel way, way proud at that moment that I could at least do something, you know, to, to, to help their, their mourning, you know, and, and what they were going through. And especially so powerful about ceremony and ritual. We, we have lost so much of that totally. or just turned it over to, to a church service or, or, or what have you, and just going through the motions. But the, there's just something really, you have the, not just the ceremony and the ritual itself, but you have the history of how long the ceremonies and rituals had been performed and the energy coming from the beginning of the very first time it was performed all the way, you know, down the line and mm -hmm. how many more are going to continue that ceremony or ritual. Um, it's, it's a very, whatever the ceremony or ritual is, it, it, it really and truly does have its own powerful and is, its own power and is powerful. Definitely. I mean, the, you know, they say it's kind of like, you know, the egregore, you can have the, that, that kind of thing exists in that. And, and like I said, when, when we were doing it, I was like, well, we should be telling everybody this, but <laughs> it's like, but it was like, it okay. It's okay now. Right. But yeah, uh, but it, it, it showed, um, you know, the strength of our brotherhood, you know, and our, and our fraternity and, and, and what we do. And that was kind of the most evident for me, you know, where, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of death. You know, that's, that's the thing. And, um, it's hard to, to tell somebody who's grieving. Uh, it's no big deal, but, <laughs> it's, but in that moment, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to be able to try to convey the message that it's okay. You know, and I think it does. And I think that's, and, and I'm so happy to hear that, that, that you got to experience that. And I'm and so amazed uh, to hear your story and how that affected you and, you know, not having any, um, foreknowledge or anything of it. You're just kind of like, oh, this is going to happen. And then it happened and, and how it affected My dad asked happened. for it and I was going to make sure it happened, you know? And it was like, I didn't really think it was going to touch me personally. <laughs> right, right. You're just like, if some dad wants, okay, we'll just let him do it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's so amazing. That's so awesome. That is so great. Thank you so much for taking time and writing this amazing book and, you know, taking the time to listen to them. And, um, you know, tell them I said, hi, looking, <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading your book. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, wonder what it's about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, to me, it's, it's, you know, she's, I think she's hidden within the craft. Like what Scott said. I mean, she's right behind you. And she's, She's she's approaching you from the northeast through the sycamore. You know, I, you, you've already got an affinity with her. She has an affinity with you. And trust me, um, it has been my experience and not just my personal experience, but my experience, you know, with clients and, and what have you is that when she shows up, she has work for you to do. I know. I just, you know, the sword. <laughs> Just I get I get it, but I'm like eh. the symbology there. I need to work out because I'm like, do you, is it literal? Do you need me to do something with the sword, or is it is it more of a you know what are you telling me here? But yeah, no. I mean, when I saw this this uh, this statue, it was a you know um, a state sale, and you know I drove you know I was driving by and I was like, eh, I pulled in and I was like, okay. I'm buying this. <laughs> it's not something I pick up and buy, you know, it's like. She wants to go home with me. Yeah. I was like. <laughs> I cannot leave her. Yeah. And you can see the lady was like, yes. Like she didn't think I was going to buy it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, 
Okay. Then I got I brought um, it home. My wife was like, "You're not putting that in the house." And I'm like, "Fine, I'll take it downstairs. It's fine. I'll put it next to her." She wanted to come home, and she came home. And, yeah, that was it. Uh, I one of the things that I have learned in my own personal process um, is almost everything is based upon relationship, and when you look at relationships whether it's with her, you know, who, who is coming to you mm -hmm. uh, or God or goddess or what have you, is that the, the funny thing about relationships is when we first meet someone, we go, oh, I know everything about you. You know everything about me. Isn't this great? And then we find out, mm, no, we don't. <laughs> if you get to know each other, you find out more stuff, right? Right. And right you continue to get to know each other you realize that that is a never ending process mm -hmm. you know it's um and so i i've learned or i hope that i've learned that whether someone is physical or non-physical um from a star system or another dimension or timeline or whatever we want to call it is that when I first meet someone, whoever or whatever they are, it's the beginning of a relationship mm. and that we have to get to know each other and we have to learn how to communicate with each other. And and it's just like any other relationship. Um, um, my significant other's name is Michael and Michael and I, let's see, we'll be together, I guess, 12 12 years maybe coming up cool um i'm still learning things about him and myself in our relationship and hopefully we'll continue to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so i use that as an example in that it's the same way with those who are in non-physical form or we see as other is that, hi, my name is such and such. What's yours? Or, you know, let's get to know each other. And how does this work? And you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to figure all of it out in the very beginning. You just, just tell her if you feel comfortable the next time she shows up or you go looking for her and tell her, I'd like to get to know you better. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like? Yeah. What's your sign? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we make this so woo, 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 woo. And it's like, no, it's just getting, getting to know each other. And um, I think I, for, I always put myself into the thing that they're, uh, and this is wrong, but I put them in a more, um, and I, I hate to say this word, but more of a divine aspect than they are. Like I always mentally project that they are more powerful than me. And when I, when I know that at the same time, the, the complete reverse is probably maybe more, more so true. Right. But I, but I immediately go to the point like this is, this, this lady's coming she's, she's going to turn me into something, you know? And it's like, well, I need to get better at the, Hey, well, maybe I'm the superior one in this relationship, or maybe I have a little bit more knowledge than maybe she needs something for me that, you know, maybe, you know, maybe. I Right, right, right. Yeah, we need some from each other, kind of thing, right? If if we're sparks from the original source of creation, I'm assuming that's true for everything that there is. Right. I think I read somewhere that I'm, somehow that like if we are the the sparks of original creation, that at some point creation is is spread itself so thin that it's trying to get back to itself. <laughs> that in that uh, yeah i and i understand i understand the concept for for me it it, it brings me it, it it's bringing something to mind of um it's like i i talked about that i when i think about ascension i don't think it's about us trying to get out of here i think it's about trying to get more of us in here exactly like it's um, trying to get back into us or yeah, yeah right it's it's the same thing about um, karma, you know. Is that we had this idea of oh, you got to pay for your karma or what Public have you. Debt. Yeah, right, right. And for me, 
I see it very differently. It's yeah, things what whatever seeds you plant is going to bring the the bring is going to manifest the garden in which you live. What whatever kind of seeds you plant. Um, but I don't I don't see karma as much of a um, I see karma more that way than you know you having to pay off your karma or this a karmic debt. It for me it has more to do with when we choose to incarnate. It's not so much about what am I going to have to pay off or what do I need to balance. It's like what have I the my spark of divinity not experienced yet for the whole. Um, I. I, I, I want to experience this. I want to experience that. That it's more about the experience, the the the, the divine and, and the sparks is more about the experience than it is about paying off karma or trying to pay off pay off something. Redemption it's, isn't is not more of the re, you're not born into the redemption. Is it's more of the continuation of the experience so to speak yes it's, it's it's the way it's what i really resonate with and i keep getting confirmations for it um and and also this idea you know we talk about past lives and i kind of feel like that that's a misnomer is that time is happening um concurrently all yeah. time is happening uh, yeah I, I understand for sake of conversation you know we have to speak in linear terms past present future you know mm -hmm. just so we can wrap our heads around it but um uh, I remember saying to a, a, a class that I was teaching one time um, about uh, reincarnation, I said, what, what if I die tonight? And I'm saying, okay, the next experience I would like to have is, you know, for everyone and bringing it back to the whole and um, that I'm having the experience so I can bring it back to, to everyone and everybody else, all that there is. What if I... You go, oh, you know, I haven't experienced being um, a really poor person in the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Hmm. Now that you go, wait a minute, don't you have to experience a future? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And it's like, no, it's all happening at the same time and it's all about experience. And I haven't, I, as the spark of the original source of all creation, haven't experienced that yet. So I think I'd like to experience that, or I'd like to experience this, or and so we're. I feel like we're picking and choosing experiences for the experience itself, but it, it also is expanding our consciousness and the consciousness of all that there is in in the process because there's more experience for everyone to have access to. More data, more and, more emotions, more yeah, yeah. I always I always thought I had that ancestral. Um, I thought that ancestral DNA connection thing had something to do with it as well, where at times I could put myself in the shoes of an ancestor that at one time was plowing a field or marching into battle or, you know what I mean? Or, you know, living as a poor person in the middle of the Chin, Chin dynasty, right? <laughs> or whatever. You, you know, it's like, I feel like there's that connection. We're definitely carrying that DNA, DNA, and that's I, I fully believe continues to be alive inside of us. Yeah, and this is a, a horrible thing that I've said a bunch, and I hope my daughter, when she's older, doesn't listen to this and think I'm such a good jerk. But you know, like on this time around, I was like, I'm not having kids. I was like, I am done. Like I've, I'm cool. I need to come back. I want to go back and hang out. I'm, I'm all right. But I always thought that I had this. DNA tie to at least earth because of procreation continuing my, my line of DNA. So I was like, if I don't continue at this time, I get to go back and hang out. Right. Eh, no kids. Then I don't, you know, then I can get to go back. Yeah. And then I met my wife and fell in love and was like, no, I want to do this. And it was the best. Exp I would never, you know, take that back ever, ever, ever. I mean, I would I wish it, you know, would have done it. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. But that was my, that was what I was thinking is that the, my DNA was tied somehow to the planet. And then if it didn't continue, I didn't have to come back, but 
I don't know that that means. And, and it's almost like your your DNA was calling for you to continue the line. It's because it's contributing something or energetically or, yeah. Um, yeah. There's just so much to explore in life, isn't there? <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> life is so in, rad. In my case, I chose not to have children because I didn't want to continue with the cycle of my family line. It was like the book stops here. I'm I'm not even going to accidentally continue this this stuff, you know. Oh, so you you don't have any children at all? No. no. And it was a conscious choice, not because I I dislike children. I love children. Right. Um, but it was like for me, it was a conscious choice of of not continuing the cycle that had been happening in my family line. It was like, uh, you know, I, I could consciously choose not to repeat the cycle, but I was afraid that it, I still would do it anyway, that it would slip in there somehow. And like, okay. No, that, the line stops here. The, the buck stops here. Not, not going to continue that. No, I, but I've also been mother to a lot of different <laughs> individuals, you know? So it's like, yeah, I would, I, it's pretty much a parent to my own parents, you know. So it's, um, yeah, I think it's so beautiful that, um, that you have a four year old daughter that one of your hopes for her, um, is that she does draw down her own divinity, that she draws down not just the divine feminine, the divine, but she draws it all down to be divine and to be whole. And um, that's that's a really big deal. I mean, she's a really lucky kid to have you as a dad. Uh, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon to tell. <laughs> <laughs> For both of us, I think <laughs> she's already running me around. So who knows? Oh uh, yeah, no that I, you know, I believe she chose you and your wife to be her parents. So she has some reason for being your child. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so a weird thing is that like after I went through that and you know after I had Stella my my grandmother passed away and I got all of the photos and like the, the family history and I was going through everything and I and I learned that on my grandmother's side. Um, so it'd be my great grandmother had uh, four sisters and none of them married, none of them, none of them married, none of them had children. And I was like, I wonder if they knew something as well at that point where they were like, we're done. You know, yeah. I, it, it was really interesting because and, and, my grandmother called them old maids and, you know, I'm like, grandma, what's old maid? She's like, well, they never married. And I was I always thought old maids is the card game, you know. Like I didn't like. <laughs> I was like, like old maids. She's like, they're all they're all old maids. And I'm like, she's like, they never got married, never had kids. And I'm thinking, what the hell? And I never put it into perspective until I had that whole thing, you know, come to me about you know not continuing the bloodline or not continuing the DNA. And I was thinking. I want, you know, because, you know, I've, the more I've learned of science and, you know, the mitochondrial DNA is, is more past than the, the, we're just, you know, the, the female side of the whole thing is way more predominant than the male side. We're just here for the, to make things happen. But the mitochondrial DNA is passed exclusively down the lines. And I'm thinking why the, why we, especially Catholic, you know, strict Catholic bringing, you know, they they were German and Irish, you know, why, why didn't they just get farmed out <laughs> you know just want to speak that you're, yeah. you're supposed to have kids you're supposed to have kids yeah 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 we're talking 1800s right so late 1800s oh, interesting wouldn't you love to know more about that i would love to hit like you know just say why like what was the and they weren't you know, i got a photo of them they're not like homely <laughs> you know they're not they're good looking <laughs> women you know it's was, it was just kind of weird it was just kind of like what was the rationale behind that because the, well my great grandmother obviously you know that's why i'm here but like yeah. what, what did what did and it is the possibility they just weren't into men. It could have been. It could <laughs> have know? been. It could have been. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to confess, I'm into men. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, I get it. The book. I, it Thank just you. I'm really telling you, I I ran out of I ran out of highlighter. We're gonna. I mean, I know we've been going for a couple of hours here, but I mean, there's so many good things in here. Where you know, I just. Here's a here's a here's a really good one. You cannot you cannot manipulate and control people who are connected to their own divinity, 
and who have a literal relationship with the divine. They have no need for formal religious institutions. That's starting to happen everywhere, right? The Catholic Church, I saw something <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. It's like they lost a billion dollars in 2020. And I'm like, a bill, uh, they lost a billion dollars because of people not going to church. And, and, and I'm like, oh, boo hoo. <laughs> like, <laughs> when you think about all of the wealth that's just sitting in the Vatican, right? They, they need help with their legal fees, right? Or going, I don't think so. <laughs> billion dollars. It makes me so. It's like you got to be kidding me. Who cares? It's like <laughs> ah, I know. That's that's the part. That I think when that domino tumbles, I think that's kind of be that's going to be the. Uh, that's going to be the, the I, I, in my mind, I think that'll be the catalyst where, where people will start to go, well, something's going on, you know, because that's been such the staunch institution for so long that yeah. when that thing tumbles, then, then people will start to go, oh, maybe there's something else going on, but maybe we'll be around to see it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what tomorrow brings, right? Which right. was a joke, you know. They go, but you're a psychic, and I go, I'm just bumbling and stumbling my way along too, you know, <laughs> just like everybody else, just bumbling and stumbling. Oh, I meant to ask you about that. So, like, how did that? How did that affect you when the, con the consortium said, or did they say to you, like, you you shouldn't be doing any more readings? Did they? Did they come to you and say, hey, you're going to do this and this only? I mean, because you you had, you know, you were for years, you were, you know, you did readings and, and hypnotism and things like that. Did, were you were you just kind of like, we you talking about? This is what I do. I mean, was that a big kind of awakening kind of thing for you? or It took me a, it took me a full year to come to terms with it mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because it's, it, it wasn't just what I did. It's who I've been, right? And it's also be it's also been strains of income, of course. quite frankly, right? You know? Because it's the way that I did make my living as well, right? Um, it wasn't so much of them saying you can't do this other stuff, stop doing it. It was more like we really want and need your undivided attention for this work. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Would you be willing? And, and it, it took me about a year. It was like, um, I, I first gave up uh, teaching the classes I was teaching. And then it was like, okay, gave up uh, clients for hypnosis. The very last was the, the last reading that I did for a client. I was very consciously aware. This is the last one. Mm -hmm. It was like, and it, and it wasn't, it wasn't like grieving and mourning. It was a process. It was like I just knew okay, I'm not going to be teaching this anymore. I, I may be teaching some more, but I'm probably not going to be teaching this. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to be doing hypnosis anymore. And then it was like, oh, okay, this is this is my last uh, psychic reading for someone, and it it didn't happen all at once. Like I say, it was, it was, it was about a year, but I was very consciously aware when my very last psychic reading was. Wow. Um, and it, it felt, well, one of the ways I explained it is that um, I had worked with clients that had gone through what I uh, describe as a phantom death mm -hmm. um, uh, that, um, it's like you die, but you don't leave your physical body. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and um, it's like dying without having to leave your physical body and you begin a brand new life. Uh, it's like having two contracts and, and fulfilling them in the same body kind of thing. The soul, the soul with the first contract. Your soul, part of your soul, the part of your soul that had the first contract leaves and another part of your soul comes in. And so I describe it as like a phantom death in that that it may sound crazy. It's the only way I know how to describe it. All those things were her. That's not 
me anymore. It was like that, that, that was her who did all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I still have all the experience and the expertise and, and the blessings from all of that. But that, that was her. Mm -hmm. When I went to the Phantom Death, she, she, she went on. And then the other part of my soul that had contracted for this consortium work came in. Um, and so I look at her very fondly because it, it was it was absolutely beautiful experiences. But I look at her me now and know that it's just expanding exponentially in front of me, even though I can't see it all, don't know about it all. But it's like. It's like a, it's a brand new life. And, I, you know, there's a lot of excitement about that, but there can also be a lot of anxiety about that. It's a brand new life. Uh, <laughs> but, well, that's, that's exactly what a lot of the initiatory schools go and mystery schools kind of do, believe it or not. They do, you know, it's not a mystery. I mean, I mean, it's not a, I guess it is a secret, but it's not a, not something that's not known. Is that, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 And I think that it, I, I see a lot of parallels from what you're describing as a lot of the initiatory degrees from the mystery schools. So it's it feels very powerful, and um, some some days I do better with that than I do others. You know, some days it's like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what if I agree to do? Okay. All right. Let's, 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 let's ground and center and let's get on with it. You felt the same way when you left Christian fundamentalism oh, there you go. Yeah. to you know, come out of the closet as a psychic. <laughs> Are you regret that? No. Okay. Well, it's, it's just this, that, that same process again of letting go of the old to make room for the new. Yeah. No, totally. I, I, I'm sorry that you're not doing hypnotism anymore because I would like to try that sometime, but never, uh, right. <laughs> what's that? Sorry. Yeah, I know. Right. Okay. I'm hypnotize myself. <laughs> There's great hypnotist all uh, everywhere though. Yeah. You know, you just, just have to kind of check around and see what's happening. Yeah. It's yeah. a really cool process. Oh, I mean, yeah. really, truly, all hypno hypnosis is is focus concentration. Oh yeah, um, that's. But it it definitely helps you get your conscious mind out of the way, so you can get in touch with your subconscious and your superconscious more easily. Because that conscious mind, whoo, noisy man, chatty. Yeah, it, it's like when you're trying to calm it down to get to your subconscious or, or superconscious, it, it's like you're trying to kill me and I, I've got to claw and scratch for my life. And it does. It claws and scratches. Hypnosis definitely helps kind of calm down that conscious mind and go, we'll get back to you later. We're not killing you. You don't have to claw and scratch to live. Just we'll get back to you later. Just, you know, here, have, have, have some chocolate. <laughs> 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 yeah. to the subconscious and the superconscious. Oh, I know, I know. I, I think that's what I, I when I meditate, I get it. I freak myself out a little bit because I can find I find that slipping away, and I'm like, um, <laughs> and, um now the other I, stuff happens. I'm jealous because it's. I find it very challenging to. Oh, it's hard. To to meditate with it because my conscious mind does start that clawing and scratching. I'm dying. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've, I've got to rear my ugly head and save myself because I'm dying. Uh, one of one of the, you know, uh, Buddy, um, I don't know if you saw the video that I did with Buddy. Uh, he's um, He was Psychic X before, but uh, Buddy Bolton is amazing, right? And he's kind of given me some pointers along the way. And the one way that he did tell me was to do... Um, you know, nothingness meditation, right? Where it's all just all black. And he's like, I'm, I'm like, I can't do that. He's like, okay, well, fine. Just everything's black, but then there's a red dot. Oh, like, okay, fine. So it's kind of straight on the red dot. And then then after, then you remove the red dot after a while, right? But it's like, okay, you're still going to see a pink thing in there. Because it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like a little red still. Is a little red in there, a little black. But, you know, 
but you, you know that that whole nothingness meditation is kind of where you know that's kind of and it, it, it's really hard it's really hard too but i've also had times where i'm like all right i'm gonna try this and i get into it and i can see the room and it, like jay has said this before and i'm like wow when he said it i was like i can't believe he's experienced this too is where you close your eyes but you could see the room in front of you like it comes up with your eyes closed. Uh, I don't know if I explained that yeah. right, but yes. just, you yes. know, it's like, pff, everything's in front of you. We think we see only with our physical eyes, but we do not. We, no. we see with our whole body. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's really, I think the most, um, when, when the effects of meditation, um, I get the same effects when I'm in mother nature. Oh yeah. I mean, I am, it, it's not just appreciating Mother Nature. It's like I, I go somewhere else, mm-hmm. um, and it's, uh, uh, and it, it, it can be the simplest thing, you know. It, it can just I, I went drove through a fast food uh, place the other day, and you know everybody's busy and all of this and what have you. And as I'm placing my order, there's like five or six sparrows underneath the place where you place your order, and I just zoned out. And then finally, I heard them over the speaker going, ma'am, would you like to place your order? <laughs> yes, I would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. No, no bird, birds <laughs> do it. Bo- <laughs> birds do it for me, too. That's amazing that you just said that because my wife is like, you, you're like the bird guy. And she's like, yeah, you're like an old man bird guy. I'm like, I don't know. I like watching birds. They just fascinate the hell out of me. I see them. And it's just like, what is that? You know, I just all, it out. It was, I wasn't even there anymore. I, and, and I had to scream. It was like, I went, <laughs> yes, I, I her, sorry. Yes, I am hungry. <laughs> I get, some, yeah. get some for the birds too, but <laughs> some fries for the birds. <laughs> uh, Duane, let's do this again. Can we chat again sometime? I would absolutely love to. Be so and I just um, so appreciate the work you're doing. Thank and you. I'll also plug Jay and and give hugs and kisses to Jean Luc. I will. Uh, it, it just y'all in, y'all individually and also collectively. It's just something about your in like in, individually. It's there, and then it's like it spans exponentially when the three of you get together. You can feel the love. You can feel the respect. You can feel the humor. Um, it's just. It's just absolutely delightful. I don't think even y'all recognize how much you're expanding consciousness oh, wow. by your broadcast. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I, you know, John Luke found me and, you know, we kind of found each other and, you know, Jay and John Luke is the, he's the secret linchpin in the whole thing. You know, he's uh, an amazing human, you know. Talk about a connector of dots. I mean, anytime I... It, it can be just this simple little tweet where he's been reading this, reading that, and what have you. And all of a sudden he goes, I wonder if it has anything to do with such and such. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's like I'm going, I had never, first of all, not only had I never connected those dots, I hadn't even seen that some of those dots were there that could be connected. And he's just going, all of a sudden, he's got this picture, and I'm going, how does a mind work like that? I just appreciate it so much. He's amazing. He's amazing. Help me out. I'm, I'm like untold, you know, just just the amount of uh, natural ability and, and kindness and compassion and hu- humor and humility and everything, you know. I think, I think that's great. I mean, because like I said, we were saying earlier, sometimes it gets so heavy, but like, at least all of us know that we have to have that humor, that li- you know, liberty to kind of like make it through and and, and make it <laughs> make it be okay. Because it's like, and, oh, the, and the the struggle is all part of the human experience too, right? Right, of course. Like yeah. I said, somebody asked me, you know, what? Well, then, what is your religion or spiritual path? And I'm joking, I'm bumbling and stumbling, you know. <laughs> Just trying to find my way, just hoping I'm being of the highest spiritual service, you know, and, and hoping that I'm getting something right. Um, but John Luke see, saw whatever in me and, and same thing with Jay and, you know, and it's like, it's the same thing, you know, we see it in him and it's kind of like, yeah. And it, and it makes you just go cool. Like, you know, the, the weird things that I think and say probably aren't that weird and don't be shy about saying it out loud because who cares? <laughs> well, give my best to both of them. 
I will. Yeah. I will uh, for sure. Th- thank you for y'all interviewing Ryan. That's how I found y'all. And um, I'm gonna- delighted that the, that the lady, whoever she is and whatever guys, you know, she, she appears is, is really knocking on your door. She is. I mean, and that's how I found Chris and then Ryan as well was the lady. I mean, it was kind of that same thing. And then I think um, Jean-Luc as well. And I think yeah. Jay as well. I, I think it, it's kind of how it's that whole thing is connecting all of us. I think that's really what's happening. Um, yeah. And uh, she's just going to keep coming back. So we just got to keep playing with her. I mean, you know, playing, but you know, not playing, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it sounded, <laughs> it, it sounded, didn't sound the yeah, way I wanted to. Just keep yes, getting yes, to getting into Nora. Yes, I didn't want to say play. you and I met. It sounded sexist and weird, but yes, I need to buy her drinks. I need to talk to her about what she likes and what she doesn't. Like. Yes, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I've been here before. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, it's so funny. I think that it's, it's so funny when uh, you know the the more I'm here, I'm, you know, especially in kids, I'm like, this kid's been here a billion times. This kid's new on the block. This kid's been here longer than I've been here. <laughs> like. <laughs> And you see these kids and, you know, even grown ups, it's, it's awesome. But thank you so much for doing your work that you do and in, in the consortium and tell the consortium, I said, hi. And, you know, I sure will. and if they uh, have any more messages about the, any other things I need to do. I think it was just to ask the question. Well, that's when good. We write a book about the divine feminine and masonry. And it was like, okay, I'll ask him. It's, it's up to him how we answer <laughs> Or not? <laughs> no, it's on. It's it'll okay. <laughs> Fine. What what are you going? Uh, nope. Dead. But I got a P. But I got a P first. I got the P first. That's the. <laughs> That's when they catch you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know it's it's gonna happen. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Hopefully, I didn't keep you up too late. This is this has been awesome. No problem. This this has been so delightful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I I got your stuff. I got your links and stuff. So I'll put them all in there and everything as well for the books. Right. And I just like to leave you with that. I hope that you are blessed in all the many ways that you bless others. Thanks. You as well. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Have a great night. (laughs) You too. Bye-bye.